All right. <clears throat> Randall, uh, what are the best foods to eat if I'm insulin resistant and uh, histamine intolerant? I'm currently on day eight of a fast. Wow. I mean, I say beef. Beef is great. If you're insulin resistant but histamine intolerant, try to make sure that the beef is not aged. You can get non-aged beef at the Lido Meats or just get it fresh from your local ranchers at the farmer's market. Any any tips? Yeah, histamine uh, issues, right? oh, yeah. yeah, I had histamine issues for a while. So what you can do if you can't afford the the meats that's not aged because they are quite expensive, uh, cook cook the meat from frozen. Um, make sure that you eat, eat everything. Don't don't put leftovers in the fridge because that's going to increase the histamine content. If you're eating eggs, uh, take the whites out. Just eat yeah. the yolks. That can help as well. And you may be sensitive to the yolks, though. So maybe just uh, kick, kick the egg. Uh, lamb that typically lower histamine because it's a smaller animal. So uh, you can go that route. Well. Great tips. Yeah. And Adam, talk about how long it took your initial histamine intolerance to heal and reverse. About three months. Three months. Yeah, three months. Three months. Yeah. I have a question for Adam. Adam, did you ever eat veal to see how you responded to that, being a smaller version of the beef? I tried. I tried. Uh, yeah, I tried veal and lamb, and I just don't like the taste of it. So I was mainly cooking beef from. Now, some people have a really severe yeah, histamine intolerance, and they have to go much, much further than what I did. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's the case for. Uh, Randall or not, but yeah. Okay. Hope that helps, Randall. Those are great tips. Right. And we got uh, our friend Sandra McDonald. Uh, I got a call back uh, to doctor. Or I got called back to doctor after care plan bloods, uh, cholesterol absolutely top of range, triglycerides elevated, kidney numbers twice as high, uric acid up, A one C within normal ranges. Help. I think this is for Dr. Phil, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, none of this is ideal. The Your triglycerides being elevated, I assume your kidney function is abnormal in that your BUN and creatinine are high. But a lot of times those numbers are high because you're fasting for the kidney test. And I'd be interested to know uh, if those were really high or you were just a little dehydrated when you got it done. But your uric acid up is is an indication of inflammation in your body. So you've got some healing to do. Um, I would stick with it. Give yourself an opportunity to um, do more healing, get inflammation out of your body, eat lots of fatty meats, and, and uh, probably add daily walking to get some movement. Really, congratulations for your A1C being in normal range. And uh, see what you can do with those perfect that's awesome i I'd, I'd chime in but i don't think sandra wants to take advice from me on this <laughs> so, <laughs> uh let's see uh bell uh, i think we have a super chat oh, yeah, there is. okay oh there we go uh i asked about uh, let's see this is nav again thanks nav so much for the super chat i asked about how often to eat because i told uh i told I'm told by carnivores to eat when hungry for healing, but I can do two meds or OMADs even if I haven't healed from health issues. Also tips uh, to go from three meals to OMAD or two med. Tips to go from three. Okay. So let me, let me just try to process this. So Nav has asked about how, how often to eat. He's told by carnivores to eat when hungry. Yeah. For healing. But can I do TUMAD or OMAD? So Nav, maybe you can follow up. Do you have healing right now, or you're you're pretty much good to go, and you want to try out TUMAD or OMAD? Um, and he says, even if I haven't healed from health issues, tips to go from three meals to OMAD or TUMAD. Let's just start with that last question. What are some tips that we can give Nav to go from three meals a day to one meal a day or two meals a day? Yeah. Raymond, why don't you? Yeah. So uh, on that strategy from three meals. So what we want to do is we want to go three meals. I like the idea of getting, making sure that you're just comfortably full or even at that point of comfortably stuffed. 
and you're doing it for a week and what you're wanting to notice actually i prefer two weeks but what you want to notice is the point where you just don't want to do it anymore it's difficult you forget to eat that's when your your signal to go to two mads is then what you would do is go to two mads for seven days i usually have a sequence of that and then you'll notice that even the two mads well sometimes you could easily skip the, the second one. You're enjoying the hunger at that point. And that's where you know that you're properly nourished. Then that finally, you can go into that OMAD range with, I don't like staying in OMAD because that's kind of like a limbo. Um, so kind of like a OMAD, two MAD range, you know, maybe OMADs in the weekdays, two MADs uh, on the weekends or, or however you want to shuffle it, but just enough to give uh, the body a little bit of uh uh, hormetic changes to to uh, give it a little bit of change so it can help you later on down the road get it more efficient. Carrie, how how do you go? Because initially you must have eaten more meals than two meals a day, right? Right. Okay. So how did you naturally go into two fat? Gradually. Gradually. Yeah, gradually. I know gut bacteria, gut biome. You, your body gets into routine, so. Doing it gradually, I think, is is a great tip. Yeah. How about you? Oh, Matt, to two Matt? Yeah. It was really just a matter of once I lost most of my body fat, uh, my my hunger signals were telling me I need to eat more. So I, I had literally had to eat more. I eat probably twice as much as I did when I was losing weight. Mm. Nice. Wendy? I'm a little bit different because I've got let bad restrictions, so I can't sit and eat a whole big steak I have to eat like a bird throughout the day so mm -hmm. probably not a good person to ask for that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well I'll chime in for specifically females though just since we're on the topic when I did one meal a day OMAD for an extended amount of time it started getting very easy to under eat because mm -hmm. when I would get busy and I would just be so used to OMADs every single day and just so comfortable with that and I would get too occupied with like my busy schedule then when i eat and i don't really focus on eating enough and really eating a lot of fat it can typically um, you can just be in the danger zone of not eating enough therefore affecting your hormones so for females especially make sure that you are eating a lot of fat and make sure you keep tabs on like are you actually eating enough in general if you're doing omads for long periods of time and nav says not healed yet so Raymond, do you still recommend for Nav, he's not healed yet, to still aim towards moving into TUMAD and OMAD? Yeah, so that depends on your body, right? If you can and you're enjoying 3MAD, stay there. If your body's saying, look, I would rather have that rest period than go to that. So 2MADs, you got to realize 2MADs is kind of like where we start talking about fasting, intermittent fasting. And uh, there is healing to go there if the body's ready, if the body's nourished. Flirting with OMADs is a great idea also because it gives your body, uh, your stomach specifically a rest, but only if you're nourished. So the question is, is whether are you nourished? Are you ready to go to that next step? Then take that next step, but don't stay there. Just like Bella said, if you go OMADs too long, you're going to tend to under eat. A lot of this is a balance between eating enough and also fasting enough. I haven't healed from health issues. This is Navigant. He says, I haven't healed from health issues. So I was wondering if I should eat when hungry or if I can do OMAD or TUMAD. Yeah, I want to tackle that one too real quick because hunger is tricky. Okay, so it depends on how long you've been carnivore and how well you know the hunger signal. In three mads, this will teach you that. We're talking about you're eating when you're not even hungry. You're eating because the clock says to, until you just feel like you can't anymore. On the two mads, though, you want to learn what hunger signals feels like. And in other words, it, it's nice to feel hungry. It's nice to look forward to that next meal. That's what you want to look for. So but it's never at the point where it's like, I'm ravenous. I got to drop everything to eat. That's not a good sign. That's showing a lack of nourishment and you're not quite ready to go to that next step. So you're playing back and forth to just get it right and get to a point where you're comfortably doing a nourished, say, OMAD or 2MAD 
or even, dare I say, skipping a day should you need it. So I have a follow-up question since we're on the topic. Would you say that you can get just as much healing from autophagy from extended fasts as something like priming where you are intentionally eating a lot of meat and fatty meat, right? Like when you weigh which one has deeper healing, what would you say, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a total balance. It's kind of like saying like, hey, um, I'm filling my car up with ga uh, full of gas, right? And you're, let's say you're totally topped off with the gas, but you're stopping at every gas station to top it off again. It's not going to keep on being able to use that fuel and helping the body any by doing that. So we need to give it a little bit of mileage, let it drain a little bit, and then fuel it back up. So there, it is a balance. And that balance needs to be felt by everyone. It's specific to you. Meaning that if you have this ravenous hunger and you're coming into carnivore, please feed it. You're not supposed to be that hungry. Ideally, any of us, we think of carnivore as nourishment. I like what I eat when I eat it, but it's really just nourishment. It's not something like, I'm like, oh my God, I just really have to eat. And I know that feeling, that hypoglycemic feeling, cold sweats, um, you know, uh, uh, just just weakness, uh, mind fogginess, all of that. If you even get close to that, then you are not nourished. But there's something about having that much meat that gets you to the point where you're just effortlessly going a long distance. And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I can, you know, I would chime in and say this. <clears throat> that was kind of interesting because when I was doing it, it was, or when I started, it's almost like you need the dietary fat and the dietary nutrients to get your body used to being a fat burner, you know? But then once I went through the priming and got, uh, got a little bit healed, then I needed the really long fasting because I had lymphedema problems and, uh, I needed the autophagy to heal up my lymphatic system and really help specifically the dry fasting specifically the dry fasting really seemed to speed up healing the lymphatic tissue and making uh, me more fat adapt when uh, my body was looking for that metabolic fluid uh, for electrolytes and for fluid when i was doing the dry fasting so it to me it was a balance because i couldn't do the fasting until i was nourished and until i was healed enough to do it until my body became fat adapt enough to be able to run off stored fat but once that was the case, now I kind of go back and forth between, you know, I did 12 seven day fasts this year and then I had to reprime and I'm in the middle of doing repriming. So I don't know. I wonder if those things are ever going to stay static Step. or if, yeah, or it's just going to continue to be the act of balancing it, you know? I like to do it that way, but really, uh, and, and I want to talk about the dry fast that you're, you're doing, uh, Todd. You notice that after you wet fast enough and you're, first of all, you got to get properly nourished, then you wet fast and you notice with the wet fast that you're just not drinking as much. And then that's where the dry fasting starts. You, you want to flirt with that, but not until later on. So those are, mm -hmm. those are getting masterful pieces. Listening to your body is, is key on this. So anybody starting on carnivore? I want, I would prefer it if you started with straight out three meals because you can't even trust your, your sensory of, of what hunger is or, or what fullness is because it's so different. So first you have to learn that part from what carnivore fullness is. And then when it's like to the point where you don't want any more and you feel like you have the full nourishment, then that's where fasting comes in. <laughs>